cruisers welcome back to vlogtober this is going to be the bumpiest vlog you have ever seen from cruise tips tv because we are on an amtrak train that was delayed for several hours due to an accident on the tracks which i'll elaborate on a little bit more let's just say thank goodness for this and thank goodness for this because mommy patience is wearing thin so today we're going to do a fun quick q a and if you, are, if you get motion sick, you're gonna need to take some motion sick medicine right now because my tripod is moving all over and I don't even know how you guys are gonna get through this video, but let's answer some viewer questions because they've been stacking up and I feel terrible and I really wanna get to these. So our first question this week is from Tom McGordy. Tom said, not sure if this is the place to ask, but I thought I'd throw it out there. I know you can't use a drone while on a ship, but can you take one while in port while touring around? I've seen lots of YouTube videos of people doing so, but I wanna make sure it's okay. Okay, Tom, so here's the deal. You can take a drone if you'd like, but it's probably more of a pain than it's worth because what's gonna happen is that the cruise ship is actually gonna confiscate, uh, either confiscate the entire drone from you or just your controller until you get to port. Then you're going to have to check in every single port for their regulations. If you're near an airport, you're not gonna be able to fly it. I have to tell you, I don't think it's worth it. So maybe shoot me a little note and we can talk a little bit more about this offline, but my opinion on drones on a cruise for right now is it's not worth it. So sorry for all the bumpiness, you guys. There's nothing I can do. This train is rocking and rolling. All right, our next question today is from Robert Hodge. Hi, Robert. Actually, no, it's not Robert. It's Dee Dee. Robert's up with other half. Hi, Dee Dee. Robert said I could ask you some questions. I'm glad he gave you permission. <laughs> how do you know how much extra room to store when you pack for a cruise so you can safely buy souvenirs? Also, how much luggage do you carry? because I know you say to carry several pairs of shoes and you have several outfits for each day. All right, Dee Dee, not to worry. I have simple answers for you. Number one, with regard to the extra space in your luggage, my recommendation is that you actually take an extra small duffel bag or bag to cart home those souvenirs. If you are flying to port and you can't do that, then I would leave about one quarter of your bag space to take home souvenirs. Ask for your other question about how much luggage do I carry? If I'm driving to port, I take one normal carry-on size bag and one large suitcase um, per person. But you're going to see very soon that we're actually going to be doing a um, carry-on only type of cruise to Panama Canal. We're gonna try it anyway, so if I can pull it off, it's gonna be really interesting. Stay tuned for that. We shall see if my overpacking ways are over. Next question is from Amy Sue Schaefer. Hi, Amy Sue. Amy says, can you elaborate on why you prefer hard-sided luggage? I've always been fearful it would crack. So Amy saw one of our Vlogtoberfest videos where we uh, took you guys to TJ Maxx and went luggage shopping, and she heard me say that I only buy hard-sided luggage. So Amy, the reason why is because we've had some really bad experiences with fabric luggage before tearing ripping and all kinds of other nonsense so for us the hard side is better I'm not worried that it will crack it holds up better in my opinion and it's just the way that we like to go I hope that was a thorough enough answer for you all right BC057 said just wondering is there a big advantage for hard-sided over soft-sided luggage or just personal preference so same as my answer for Amy BC057 I am more of the mind that a good quality high quality piece of hard-sided luggage is going to withstand being thrown around at the at the port on an airplane and in other ways and that's been my experience too so that's my answer. Lots of questions about the luggage. All right, Joseph Smith says, I have a great set of luggage that I absolutely love, but yes, they're fabric, but I sprayed them with Scotchgard, so this is a tip for you guys. Now, if they get a mark, it easily wipes off. This was my solution that works great for me. Thanks for the tips. I never thought about looking for the carry-on friendly label. Yes, so Joseph also watched our luggage video, our TJ Maxx little adventure, and I think that's a great idea. If you're gonna go with fabric, then scotch guard it. That's such a great tip, Joseph. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Okay, Ms. Melissa says, my first cruise was three years ago when I turned 30. My mom and I went to Alaska from San Francisco. I had such a great time despite rough seas coming back. I'd love to hear more about the Canada New England cruise because I've never been to the East Coast. All right, Miss Melissa, Canada New England is such a great experience for someone who enjoys the fall colors, who enjoys history, and if you'd like to see that part of the world, the ports are wonderful. I highly re uh, recommend Holland America's um, voyages on ships like the Mazdam. Oh, you guys, this train is really moving. Um, because you get to start in one port like Montreal and finish in Boston. So instead of making a round trip, you're gonna see more ports in between and it's really special. The weather can actually be a little bit warmer. 
still if you go between you know August and mid-October but I highly recommend it get out there and do it and we'll try to do more coverage of that soon Julianne Hall says so St. Thomas got canceled on our November 15th cruise going to St. Croix any ideas for excursions can't find anything enjoy your vlogs Julianne I've never been to St. Croix so we'll see if we can get some ideas for you if any of our subscribers are watching this and have been to St. Croix let's hook it up for Julianne all right Rhiannon Summer says, it looks like so much fun. I'm starting to think about an Alaskan cruise next. She's watching our Alaska vlogs, guys. What kind of camera did you guys use for the footage of the bears? Amazing quality. Rhiannon, we used a lot of different um, cameras for the footage of the bears, but our favorite new camera is called a Panasonic Lumix. It's actually quite a small camera. We also use our iPhones. We also use a, a little handy cam or a small video camera from Panasonic that is very simple. We don't use fancy camera gear for the most part, except for my husband's DSLR. So next up, we have a question from Evelyn Ceballos. Evelyn said, we are going in December to Cozumel, Grand Cayman, Belize, and Mahogany Bay on Carnival Splendor. Any suggestions or ideas of what we could do there for budget friendly, but also nothing to do with water? or zip lining please so let's help evelyn you guys what can we do in cozumel grand cayman belize and mo bay on splendor with no water okay so for cozumel evelyn what about a jeep tour of the island does that sound fun maybe something like that in belize i think you should go visit the ruins now i've never been to mo bay but we'll let other people weigh in on mo bay for you all right gail abert has the last question of the day that i wanted to answer for you guys and then we'll sign off so you don't have to see my bumpy train experience anymore gail says hi sherry thanks for sharing your reasons oh we've got a train interruption i'm going to pause for a moment Okay, so we're gonna back up a little bit and answer Gail's question. Sorry about that, guys. We're pulling into the Ventura stop here. Gail says, thanks for sharing your reasons why you like to cruise. If you stay west and use California ports, are you going to the same places over and over? We don't fly anymore ourselves, so I think that that will happen with us, except for Hawaii, as my husband didn't care for that long of a cruise, but I loved it. I'm a sea day gal, so yeah, Gail, because we don't like to fly very much, we do end up doing a lot of West Coast cruises. Thankfully, there's a lot more options than there used to be. So, oh, oh no, another delay. Right up, please watch your step. Okay, we'll let the conductor Ventura do his station. thing. Doesn't this start to feel a lot like a cruise, you guys? Okay, so, yes, Gail. Um, I, I know what you're saying. Do we get tired of the Mexican Riviera and things like that? But the truth is, we've actually been mixing it up a little bit, driving to San Francisco and doing those Alaskan ports, and also trying to hit any cruise that goes to Mexico that adds a new port, like Acapulco or Zihuatanejo or Ixtapa or something like that. We really try to get um, on board with those a little bit more. So I hope that that helps to answer your question. But yeah, we're actually mixing up a little bit this year and going to Panama Canal. You guys, thank you so very much for tuning in for our vlog from the train. We hope you enjoyed just the simple Q&A today. I'm really sorry for the bad lighting. If I open this window, you can see why. We kind of had to close the curtain today. There's so much bright light coming in, but thanks for joining us for Vlogtoberfest. We love you guys. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye.